Hi everybody. Today on Rachel Cooks with Love, I'm gonna be making pambazos. This is a super easy recipe. They are hearty and super delicious. And today I'm gonna show you how to make them step by step. Let's get started. So I've got seven guajillo chiles right here. See, I have removed the seeds and the veins and they're nice and clean and ready to go. So let's go to the stove. So I've got some really hot water here that has just started to boil. I'm gonna add my dried chiles in there. I'm gonna push them down so that they are submerged under water like this, see? And I'm gonna remove this pot off the heat and I'm gonna let my chiles sit in that hot water for about 20 minutes. So my chiles have been soaking in this liquid for about 25 minutes and I'm ready to blend them. Now you wanna make sure that when you make this sauce that it is seasoned really well. I've had pambazos before where I didn't think that this sauce was seasoned very well and that's not a good thing. I like to prepare my sauce kind of somewhat like I would an enchilada sauce. I want it to taste delicious. So I've got all my chiles in here. I'm gonna put half a cup of the same liquid, see? I'm gonna drop in two garlic cloves, a small piece of onion, like this, a little oregano. I'm gonna put all the ingredients below in the description box. Some chicken bouillon. Now the chicken bouillon just gives it a delicious flavor. Without the chicken bouillon, it's like it needs a little something. So I like it. Here's some dried cumin. And I'm gonna put in a little bit of salt. You can put as much as you want. Now I'm gonna blend it really well. And I think that's good. See, now you want this to be a little thick. You don't want it to be too watery, okay? Because we are gonna be dipping our bread in here. So now I'm gonna pass it through my sieve and just make sure that it's real nice and smooth. See, you don't want none of this in your sauce. And look at this, real nice and smooth. Now this would be a good time for you to taste it. Mmm. Tastes exactly like an enchilada sauce, which is exactly what I wanted. So now that I have it right here in my bowl, I'm gonna set it aside and I'm gonna let it get totally cool because that's what we want before we go to the next step. I have my sauce right here and I'm letting it get nice and cool. And now I'm ready to fry my potatoes. I have one large potato and I have cut it up into cubes about this size and I have it nice and rinsed and drained. So let's go to the stove. So I'm ready to fry my potatoes. I'm gonna be using this cast iron skillet and it's nice and hot. I've got my heat set on about medium. I'm gonna add some vegetable oil. Oh, you want about two and a half tablespoons of oil and that's good. I'll give it a second to get nice and hot. Now I'm gonna add my potatoes. I'm gonna put them in place. And I'm gonna let them get nice and gold. Now, some people like to boil the potatoes first and then add their other ingredients. I like to fry them because I think that when you fry them and they get that nice crust, it just gives it a fantastic flavor. You can prepare them however you want. I'm gonna give these potatoes about four minutes before I move them around. That's the color that we want. And I'm gonna continue the process of moving them around until they're very well cooked and golden brown. Just like this. So my potatoes are perfectly ready. I took out a little cube and I tasted it and they're nice and soft, but they're nice and crunchy from the outside, which is exactly what I want. So I'm gonna remove them out of my skillet and I'm gonna set them aside on this plate. So now I'm ready to fry my chorizo. Now, as you can see, there's very little oil left from frying the potatoes. 
but I don't want any oil in here because I don't want it to be really greasy. I'm gonna add my homemade chorizo in here. And I'm gonna put a link below if you'd like that recipe, because it sure is delicious. This is pork chorizo, and it's very lean. Now, if I feel that it needs a little bit of oil, I'll add a little bit of oil to it, but I think it might be just right. So it's been about four and a half minutes, and as you can see, my chorizo has changed colors. It's a little bit darker. That's one of the signs that it'll give you when it's almost ready, see? I'm gonna add my onions. I'm gonna move it around like this for about 30 seconds. So now I'm gonna add my diced jalapeno. See, this was a large jalapeno. Now you, this is optional. If you don't wanna add it in here, you can leave it out or you can just remove the seeds and then it'll just give you a delicious flavor without the heat. In about 45 seconds, and my onions are slightly translucent, I'm gonna add my potatoes. I'm gonna add some garlic powder, because this will just really give it a kick flavor in here. I'm gonna add some onion powder, just like that. I'm gonna add some salt. You can add as much as you want. And I'm gonna add some pepper. I'm gonna add my tomatoes. And I'm gonna move everything around together like this. So it's been about one minute and everything is ready, see? So I'm gonna turn off the heat and I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna get started on the next step. So I'm getting ready to prepare my bolillos. I've got four of them right here and I've cut them in half like this, but not all the way through, see? Just like that. Now these are nice and fluffy, but yet they've got a nice little crust on the outside. Now, if you can't find bolillos in your grocery store, you can use telera bread. Now, I couldn't find any telera bread here. I can make them, but I didn't make them. So I bought these. Now, if you can use telera bread, that is great. Or you can use a French loaf and you can just cut up some nice pieces and you can use a French loaf because it's very similar to the bolillo and the telera bread. So now that I've shown you these, we can take them to the stove. So I'm gonna be using this skillet right here. And I've got my heat set on about medium, a little bit lower than medium. I'm gonna add some vegetable oil in here. And you don't have to add a lot. That's good right there. I'm gonna move it around and wait till it gets a little hot, just like that. Now, I've got my sauce here and it's nice and cold. You want it to be cold because if you use it when it's hot, then your bread is gonna get soggy. So now that my sauce is nice and cold, I'm gonna put my bolillo bread in here. And that's good. So now I'm gonna put it into the hot oil. And you're gonna want it to get a little toasty, but just make sure that you don't burn them. By getting them into the oil, it's just gonna change the flavor a lot and they're gonna be delicious. So this one is done. It's nice and toasted all around, as you can see. I'm gonna remove it and set it right here on this plate. And I'm gonna do another one. So I've got myself situated right here to put our pambasos together. I've got my nice bolillo bread here, see? So I'm gonna open it up like this and I'm gonna smear some beans inside it because I love the beans in here, see? Just like that. And I'm gonna put some queso fresco Then I'm gonna put some of my iceberg lettuce. See, just like that. 
I'm gonna put a little cotija cheese. You see, you can use any type of cheese that you want. Now I'm gonna put in my chorizo mixture in here. So you wanna keep it in there as best as you can. Oh man, I can't wait for the taste test. This is gonna be so good. See, just like that. Now I'm gonna put some sour cream. Mm. Now you can use crema if you want. I love the flavor of the sour cream in here. See, just like that. And a little bit more queso fresco on top. Now I'm gonna put some of my salsa on top. You can use any salsa that you like. You can use your favorite. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Now you wanna close it up. Mm. Now it's time for the taste test. I can't tell you enough about these. Super, super delicious. Mm. So these are my pambazos. If you like my video, give me a thumbs up. Send me a comment and tell me what you think. Thank you.